वेलकम बैक टू मेडिसन मेड इजी विथ मी कावे तेंडल एंड नाउ वील बी डिस्कसिंग एन इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक इन ई एन टी दट इज कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ क्रॉनिक सुपीरियर टू वोटाइटिस मीडिया फ्रॉम ऑटोलॉजी द एग्जाम प्रिपरेटरी रिविशन वीडियो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सी एवरी पेशेंट हू हेज क्रॉनिक सुपरेटिव ओटाइटिस मीडिया आर नॉट गोइंग टू डेवलप कॉम्प्लिकेशन इट मीन्स वी नो दैट देर आर सम फैक्टर्स विच गवर्निंग दिस दैट इज अ पेशेंट इज ओल्ड एज ही इज फ्रॉम low socio economic status family previous year surgeries immune status is very low or if there is a bacterial infection with streptococcus pneumonia h influenza pseudomonas aeruginosa or mrsa not uh, but not the least actually it is cholesteatoma the bone eroding pathology we have been discussed about this cholesteatoma long back and the video link is in the description do watch it out if you did not watch so thus Every patient with COSM are not going to land up in complication because these are all some important risk factors. Now, how does the infection is going to spread? If you are wondering where is the infection, remember it is COSM. It is chronic suppurative otitis media. Suppurative means there is pus being present. When pus is present, there is an underlying infection. Now, this infection is primarily in the tympanic cavity, that is the middle ear. From the middle ear, it is now going to spread. what are the roots very simple one if there is any congenital dehiscence it will spread number 2 it can spread through the oval window or the round window number 3 it can directly invade now this direct invasion is um concerned with cholesteatoma because cholesteatoma directly invades bone so bone erosion is present next it can cause thrombophilitis but how it can cause thrombophilitis is the infection gets spread via the haversian canals of the bone the temporal bone last it is through the surgical defects so post post surgical there can be any surgical defect and through the surgical defect there can be spreading of infection these are all some important routes through which csom is spreading now after the spread what are the expected complications to remember it see the entire thing is happening in the tympanic cavity tympanic cavity means it is the middle ear middle ear is in temporal bone now what are the parts of temporal bone we see basically we have a petrous part and squamous part so ultimately the infection can either be inside the squamous or the petrous part or rather it can spread out of this part and based on this outline we are dividing the complication into intratemporal complications and intracranial complications now first we'll complete intratemporal complications in intratemporal complications see the pathology is now in the tympanic cavity here it can extend posteriorly through the aditus adenatum reach the mastoid causing mastoiditis it can directly affect the posterior wall and it can affect the facial nerve causing facial nerve palsy paralysis next it can cause labyrinthitis and petrositis having access into the oval window now petrositis is inflammation of the petrous part of temporal bone and it can cause labyrinthitis that is inflammation of the inner ear these are all the four expected complications the intratemporal part itself with me with it means within the temporal bone all the complication arise it means within the temporal bone csym has spread and the complication occurred now what if if the csym the infection is extending out of the temporal bone yes now we'll be dealing with the intracranial complications simple again we know as we have already discussed the infection can directly spread through the haversian canal causing sigmoid sinus thrombosis or lateral sinus thrombosis now this same thrombosis if it is affecting this superior sagittal sinus then there will be obstruction in the superior sagittal sinus in turn this will impede the um, function of arachnoid villi to absorb the csf now when csf is not absorbed it in turn cause what rise intracranial lesion rise intracranial tension and yes this is called as otitic hydrocephalus or all some books uh, referring to as simon syndrome apart from this it can directly um spread superiorly through the tegument tympani that is the roof of uh, tympanic cavity so uh, uh, after uh, spread of infection it can first infect the periosteum and uh, this infection can be localized to the extradural area so extradural abscess and then after entering the dura it becomes subdural abscess it can cause irritation of this meningeal layer called meningitis causing meningitis and 
in more uh, deeper it enters and cause brain abscess this is called as an autogenic brain abscess uh, this brain parenchyma can be a cerebrum or a cerebellum but most commonly it is a cerebral abscess seen twice as frequently as cerebellar abscess so these are all the outline of what are the complications which arise after the CSOM and let's meet on next video thank you so much for your patient listening if you would like this video you like share and subscribe our channel and to get regular videos thank you stay tuned